Kristen, thank you for putting some time aside to host this tasting today that we're going to do with Oxney Organic. It's, it's great to have you here. Love the wines, and particularly as you're a very unique vineyard going down the organic route. Can you, uh, before we start the tasting of the wines, tell me a bit more about your history and your progression to where you are today with Oxney? So, um, right, we um, started in uh, plant, we started making plants in 2011 um, and we planted our first vines in 2012. Um, and then I planted over three years, 2013, 2014, and I got up to 20 acres. Um, and then in 2018, I planted another uh, 15 acres and uh, went crazy. And um, so uh, <laughs> we, overall, we have uh, 35 acres of planted vines. So we're small, um, and, but kind of on the, on the big side in terms of organic growers in the UK. Um, so we only, you know, we have our own fruit here. We have a winery. I'm in the winery um, now sitting here. And uh, yeah, it's, um, it's been an amazing experience. Uh, mostly good. <laughs> <laughs> and why did you decide to uh, switch up careers? Um, so I um, I used to work in in PR. I um, I had a technology PR agency called Hotwire, and um, I you know from years and years of working in other agencies and working my way up you know the chain of command and. Um, uh, someone offered us a, a load of money for it, um, so we sold it, uh, my business partner and I. And, um, you know, we did a long earn out and we were there for years and I finished in 2012. And, you know, it's, um, I did think, you know, maybe I should just take it easy and do something, you know, casual, easy. Um, and we were in France and uh, looked around some vineyards and stuff and I thought maybe this is what I should do. Uh, this will be fun. This looks really clever and fun and uh you know creative and uh, we already had the land we had farms we we have it, we are an organic farm and um my my partner is uh sits on a very large tractor and you know that's a huge amount of massively physical stuff we're an arable organic farm and um and then I started I called the service association and I said can I have an english organic vineyard and they're like yeah Go for it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I know. But, I, you know, it is possible. And I get a lot of calls from people saying, oh, I've been told it's really difficult. I've been told I can't do it from various consultants in the English wine scene. And that isn't right. It's totally possible. You know, it's something we, we can all do. And uh, you just have to, you know, probably extra layers of complexity having an organic vineyard and growing grapes in England. But uh, yeah, for sure it's possible. And so, so yeah, it's been quite a journey. It's been a journey. Yeah, no, I, I no doubt. So why um, the organic route in particular? Well, first of all, the farm is was organic. Um, you know, um, and uh, we wouldn't. I would do it. You know, I I eat organic food. I worry about the environment. I it's a it's a it's you know from an environmental aspect as well as a I don't want to eat food with chemicals in them, uh, who does? Mm. And uh, yeah, so I'm, you know, I mean, I saw some, you know, I, I, I am a walking piece of statistics, but I saw something which really hit me a few years ago. I was reading the um, RHS magazine and they said there's more insects and life, microbial life and insect life in a London suburban garden than there is in a farmer's field. And that's, terrifying you know we we depend on these little guys for our life if we don't have them we are we top of the chain of species we we're not viable and i you know i that's that you know if anyone has any doubt about looking at after the land in a better way um you know that is the quote isn't it there endeth my campaigning <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Oxen Organics can be a very, well, fruitful, but there's lots going on there, I imagine. How do you mean? Well, as in with all the biodiversity and, and if you're being organic, there must be a lot involved within the vineyard itself. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, I, I walk down the aisles and I'm, you know, I, I mentioned this to a vineyard manager 
from another vineyard the other day and I'm just surrounded by insects. And um, we have the most amazing bird life uh, because there's food. Um, um, I was listening to um, on the radio the other day about that. There's a, the, the shepherd has written a book and, uh, and, he, and he said that if you look at a tractor that's um, plowing or cultivating uh, on a field, um, in the old days, there used to be lots of seagulls behind it because there was food to eat. Yeah. Um, now you can't, you can't see a bird. Um, and, but when we cultivate our land, um, we, have, we are surrounded. It's like it's snowing with, with seagulls. And we're not that close to the coast. We're six miles from the coast. Um, but they just know. They know they can kind of smell it. There's food. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely um, changed. You know, all the, we bought four farms and, uh, and the... Um, the diversity in each plot is um, definitely improved since we bought it because we converted it all to organic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's not the tidiest, you know, this, this vineyard doesn't look like a park. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely not super tidy, but uh, I think one of the reasons why, you know, the, the vineyard has been, you know, so well received, the wine. Um, we've won a number of awards, you know, um, the kind of the key opinion formers in the, this industry has t- said some really nice things about our wine. And I think that's partly because it's organic. And I hear lots of vineyard, really well-known vineyards in, in say, in France are, are, you know, are actually, you know, organic. They don't necessarily talk a lot about it. It's not part of their messaging, but it's as something they do so they can grow really good grapes. So that's, a pl- that's the other side too, isn't it? That and I know um, some, you know, some big vineyards in the UK are experimenting, thinking about, you know, trying to see how they could kind of minimise uh, their use of chemicals, which is brilliant. Really good news. Great. Well, let's let's try some wines. Where would you like to start? So, um, so what we have we have as a kind of summary um, is we have our uh, three of our so far that there's only three b- bottles of our classic range, which is our top tier range and also later on this year we're also launching a, a Blanc de Blanc or a 100% Chardonnay. Right. Um, so the four. So we, we could start with the kind of mothership of the classic range which is the classic. Um, it's a blend of Pinot Noir, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. So pour myself a glass. Yeah. It's very vibrant. That's the first thing I notice. Yes. I love it. <laughs> I well, know I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Not very English. Oh, oh, it's my Norwegian roots coming out. So tell me about the, uh, your approach to this wine then. So um, this is our, our best fruit, our best juice um you know it's um to make such a you know you know an amazing wine clearly you know we're very particular about which plots we're using that particular year which um you know the grapes coming in um you know the quality control is immense um when we when we harvest i drive the tractor and uh you know i'm looking after the pickers, I'm going through the boxes, and then the, the winery team, you know, goes through them again on a, you know, a conveyor. So um, just the best fruit and the best uh, juice goes into these, these wines. Um, this is 40% Pinot Noir, uh, 38% Chardonnay, and 22% Pinot Munia. Um, all our classic range seems to end up with a fair amount of Pinot Noir and Pinot Munia. That's okay. They are super happy here, you know, like Triffids, particularly the Pinot Munia. Um, and the previous one to this um, even had even more Pinot Munia in it. And that gave us the idea of the 100% Pinot Munia we're going to taste later. Oh, okay. Um, 16% barrel fermented, um, the rest in stainless steel. 
and uh, the dosage is six. So probably worth talking a little bit about our kind of general philosophy um, too, in terms of winemaking. Um, so low intervention, you know, we're not, we don't make natural wine, but super low intervention. Um, and a bit like the vineyard, you know, the key thing about having an organic vineyard is to have attention to detail, to always be out there, making sure that disease control particularly uh, is, you know, something you're, super eagle-eyed um, and the same in the wineries to make sure we use as little kind of do as little as we possibly can get away with i mean this we're working now of course on the 20 2020 vintage and um we we're just talking about it yesterday that actually only one tank had we added a tiny amount of so2 and so that kind of shows you because we didn't have to why would you um we had a a really well received uh, still Chardonnay last summer, which went crazy and um, unfiltered, no SO2, it's, you know, unfined. And that's just kind of a prime example of where we're kind of trying to drive all the wines towards my ambition, um, do as little as we can get away with. Um, but the other thing is interesting about this particular wine, I guess, is the, um, the year 2017, which was, Awful. It's our first frost. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was a, you know, and I thought this was going to be one, one, one in a decade type of year. And um, no, it's, uh, we were frosted again in 2020. So um, I'm now hoping that we, you know, we won't be hit again for another, another 10 years. So I hope, hope so. <laughs> but that was quite frequent. And we don't even have, I don't think we have a frost site. It was just everyone in 2017 hugely frosted. Um, so, um, but yeah, it was not a good start. Well, this, um, the immediate uh, thing that I picked up on with the wine was how smooth it was. It's very, very delicate. It, it, it felt in balance. And that's a really, really good thing because sometimes some sparkling wines, they can be a bit too ferocious or, or one element can be, particularly the citrus sometimes is a bit too pronounced. It's not the case with this wine. Very, very soft. I want to use the word mellow, and, that, and that's a good thing because, again, you don't want something that's too pronounced. Lovely mouthfeel. Um, I find it quite interesting. It's, it's a really nice, uh, steady stream of bubbles. Sometimes they're quite ferocious, and, and you know, there's, there's nothing to uh, point out as a negative, but it's just, it's like the whole wine is in balance within itself. Very smooth, very delicate, really easy drinking. Um, have you had much uh, experimentation with pairing it with food? It's a food, definitely a food wine, isn't it? Yeah, I agree with that. Um, you know, this is our house wine, so we drink a lot of it. But um, anything, it can, it can go with anything, I would say. Um, fish, salmon, um, shellfish. Um, there's a lovely pub on the seafront uh, down in Rye who has it with their kind of French platter of sea um shellfish and, and fish um so it's huge a beautiful accompaniment to that i could definitely see it going with salmon absolutely first thing that came to my mind yeah <clears throat> yeah the tiny it's tiny tiny bubbles very soft a uh, little bit kind of salty uh salinity there do you feel that i i you know that's um, a wine expert in uh in rye we're close to rye and uh, that's what he says. Salinity, he says, Kristen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that would, would definitely help it cut through certain foods. So I also think pate, actually, be lovely to have some pate on toast. Again, like starter type dishes, but slightly a richer, fatter, uh, excuse me, fattier dishes. Because uh, I think it's got, it's got a very well-defined edge to it, and that's great because you want a wine to uh, almost demand your attention, you know, but it needs to have the balance, and this wine pulls that off. And for uh, entry level is the wrong word, but as, as your vineyard staple, should we say, you know, this, this is where you position us. It's lovely. Just so soft. And that's what I think is great about it. Again, it's, it's balance. It's a key thing, particularly in England, it's finding balance. And this wine does it superbly. So I think it's great. Very enjoyable. Just really easy drinking. And that's the point, I think. 
So what's interesting about it is that we um, we also um, bottled some magnums. Oh, here's a magnum um, of the same vintage, 2017, and we um, chose not to. It's um, it's a zero dosage wine um, because okay. we felt that it just you know obviously it matures differently in a in a bottle of magnum um, slower. Um, and uh yeah it's uh something we we absolutely felt was appropriate was to actually go with zero dosage same okay. wine just a different bottle right i was gonna say did you say it's from the 2017 vintage is that right yeah same vintage okay okay how much uh, same vintage very different wines interesting right yeah absolutely do you think that will continue on for some time in the magnum like it's got quite a bit of development to go um yes Possibly, possibly. Um, haven't sold them all, so that's a good thing. Um, so, um, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's it's fascinating. I mean, last year too, um, last year or the last vintage, 2016, we also had some magnums and we obviously had more, many more of the regular size bottle. And the difference in the two were pronounced. Oh, wow. Okay. And um, everyone, you know, you know, you know, loved both. We did a big tasting with friends and family. And uh, but I think it's it's um, supposedly because of the cork it has it has you know there's less oxygen getting into the into the wine so it's maturing slower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I mean it's definitely something that's worth uh, investigating for people to understand the development of wines, particularly in magnum bottles, because it is different to the normal size bottles. So it's great. I, I think personally, I think it's great that you've done that and you've got a limited number of them because we can explore the different types of wines that you're producing. So it's good. Yeah. Mm. Sounds yeah. Next time we'll open the Magnum. I will be here, or hopefully there. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we, we uh, move on to the next one, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Right. So just to check your rosé next. Yes, please. All right. So what do you look for when you're making a sparkling rosé? Where, where does Oxney want to be? Well, first, I mean, first of all, it has to fit, has to fit the style, you know, the, 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 the classic style. So super elegant, super uh, fine, uh, you know, those tiny little bubbles um, and uh, lots, you know, fruit forward. You know, I, I don't. You know, I, I feel that the, the the beauty of English wine is the fruit, um, and kind of too much, too 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 long on the lees, and too much oak, and all of that. You know, can hide the beauty of English wine, which is this gorgeous fruitiness. Um, so, but also, you know, very super dry, very fine. So, you're so this is uh, go on. Well, I was say, so you're looking to retain a lot of the fresh fruit elements to really get a uh, the burst of that, should we say? Totally. So, cherries and strawberries. The end. What I think um, is this is the end of a bowl of strawberries, where you have that <laughs> little bit of little bit of juice, isn't it? Yeah, it's got beautiful aroma. So, what I'm noticing. Very delicate. Lovely mid palate feel as well. Nice texture. It's a coat of the tongue beautifully. That's something I really like to experience within a wine is you want a good mouth feel. That's part of the lasting element. It's still there. 
really, really lovely. Smooth again. I think that's what I'm picking up most from your wines. And, and you know, I like that. I like that it's the delicateness, if that's the right word. Mm. Yeah, lovely coating of the tongue. Lovely. Wow. I think I think this uh, is a wine I'd like to experience on its own. As we were mentioning, sometimes it's nice to have the food pairings, but this is just something I just want to savour. It's really, really, it's the fruit in it. That's what it is. It's very precise, really well balanced again. Very Moorish as well, which is great. You want that for a sparkling wine. You want to go back for more. And that's that's exactly what this does. It's a, it's a real, I'll have another glass at least. <laughs> it's, it's super delicate, but super Moorish, totally. Um, and um, so uh, this is um, this is 2016. This is the first time we made the rosé, okay. um, and um, you know, um, handwritten labels, which is kind of and a lot of labels get handwritten at Oxney. Um, you'll see if you buy something from us, it's likely that my ha my handwriting is on the box or a label. Um, so um, it's um, six gram per liter. Uh, um, and dosage um, and uh, yeah it's um, I, I, I love it and I think it's just a signature of our style um, okay. you know it's uh, definitely this 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 range of class the classic range is um, you know in this in the same kind of um, profile isn't it um, and I guess it's the site you know which is hilarious because when I started out in this uh, coming from the PR background I said terroir now that is probably a piece of PR rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so so wrong, right? Um, so I'm always wrong. And um, it's the it's the site, it's the the winery, it's our style, it's our method, it's our you know uh, super dry, super low intervention, and kind of super elegant is probably a way of describing the style. I think that's a, a good thing is what you've pointed out that that's the minimum intervention uh, and it's on the back of having an organic vineyard and all of these things come together to produce your style of wines and that's obviously what we're discussing here is Oxney's organic approach your input into the wines into the vineyard and out of these two wines I mean as you know we promote and sell you guys anyway but th these are very smooth I love how delicate they feel and Particularly within English sparkling wines, sometimes the balance can be off. It can be a bit too punchy, a bit too acidic, a bit too crisp. And these are lovely elements when they are in balance. Perhaps it's due to the work you guys have put in at the vineyard, um, all the bugs, like everything coming together well. But it's so smooth, so delicate. Um, and this is definitely a wine that I would keep reaching back for. And for personally, for me, that's what it's about. So, like, will I go back for another glass? Yes, I will. <laughs> Brilliant. And coming up to Valentine, Pink Fizz, you know, it's everything, isn't it? There you go. Another reason. Wow. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a very well balanced wine. And, and that's what I, I, for me personally, it's very important to have balance in wine. It really is. Yes. Yummy. It's that bottom of the strawberry bowl feeling. I've, that's that's in my head with with this wine. So uh, yeah. That's so the next that. thing, um, the next wine, okay. um, is um, the um, classic Pinot Minia. So same series, a top end wine, and um, we launched it just before Christmas last year. And it's 100% Pinot Minia. So it's a, it's a Blanc de Noir in, try not to use French words here, actually. That's the Oxney style. Um, so we just call it a Pinot Minia, classic Pinot Minia. And in true style, lots of handwritten labels again. We made 533. Oh, really? I'm super it's rare then. Wow. It's an experiment. For yes. sure. There we go. Yeah. But it worked out. Yeah. 
And we, you know, it's, um, you obviously, you know, as you make the wine, you have aspirations and you follow the wine through and you're tasting here and there. And, and I remember, um, you know, a, 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 you know, maybe a year ago we tried it and it's like, oh, this is amazing. You know, we just, I we couldn't believe our luck. We found this, you know, gem. Um, Again, I'm picking up on how soft it is, very delicate and smooth. And this is just on the aromas. I haven't gone to the palate yet. Really beautifully balanced, which is lovely. And I've mentioned this a couple of times about your wines is the balance. And that is key to having a wonderful, sparkling wine. But it's so soft and delicate. I can't wait. It's interesting. It's, so got a, um, it's got a bit of a tart edge to it that I wasn't expecting. More so, um, like cooked apple fruit and apricot, um, like a crumble. That's the word I was looking for. So I wasn't expecting. And that's a really nice touch, particularly, I think, going on the back of the wines that you've just had. I mean, I'll let you talk a bit more about it, but that was just so pronounced. Um, yes, uh, ca it's carry like on. It's like biting into a, uh, a red apple, isn't it? But what I get is... I also get um, Christmas pudding, uh, lots and lots of uh, dried fruits, um, lots of citrus, different types of citrus. Um, I adore it. I just absolutely find it amazing. And um, pneumonia, much underrated, but I think it's coming coming through as a, a kind of uh, a, a grape of the future. Um, so. Um, yeah, we discovered it in October last year, uh, so it's you know it's quite young. Um, this is 2017, um, and uh, four grams per liter dosage, so very low. Um, and uh, yeah, we we it's super happy. We had this for Christmas at home. I, I can totally it's see why. The, it's definitely more the dried fruit, which is something you mentioned. So the dried apricots, and because um, it. Sweet's the wrong word because it's not a sweet wine, but it has this, uh, it's the concentration of fruit. That's what I'm looking for. There's a beautiful concentration there. Again, lovely mouthfeel that you've achieved, coated the tongue beautifully. Yeah, but yeah, this is a great wine. And what a superb way to finish. Yeah, God, it's got beautiful finish. That's what I'm quite surprised about. It's still there, which is great. And I love that about wine, particularly this is obviously very good spark to remember when you have a pure lasting finish and again the mouthfeel and it's really interesting to note again part of doing the tasting like this where we've gone back to back with them just how much this is lasting it's great it's interesting isn't it and yeah. and even though this one has a bit more of a punch i think um you know the pneumonia is a it's a very specific very fruity kind of in, you know interesting um, great. It's um, the, the, the classics, the series of all of these wines, which, you know, not 2017 and there was one 2016. Um, yeah, it's a kind of the signature of our style is that kind of um, elegant, dry, but round, you know, the classic, the one we started with. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the rosé. And then this, is, this has a bit more of a punch, but super exciting. Absolutely. But it's, it's balance. That's the main thing I've picked up from your wines, which I've mentioned, balance. And it's, it's a really good attribute to have in wine and very, very important. I think people um, aren't aware of how vital it is to achieve that within a wine. And particularly being an organic vineyard, I imagine it's a little bit more difficult to do because there's much, much more steps, more variables. But you have certainly pulled it off. Three lovely wines. Really, yeah, really, really lovely. Thank you. No, no, thank That's you. That's really kind of you. I think it's really unusual. I think we'll, we haven't actually made any more. We're coming through with more rosé, classic rosé and classic. Um, and also we're launching, of course, the, the Blanc, the Blanc, the 100% Chardonnay in the classic series I mentioned earlier. Um, we haven't made any more of this, but I think 2021 might be the year we do, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's a rare beast. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. 
I'm really pleased you like the wines. That's fantastic. Yeah, no, no. Very, very enjoyable wines. I love how easy they are to drink. And that's a really good thing, just the immediate enjoyment. So uh, thank you. Beautiful, beautiful wines. Just uh, fill us a little about the future plans for yourself and, and the vineyard. So um, we are, uh, we've always made sparkling as well as still. So um, my ambition is to kind of, you know, complete the sparkling, the classic range to make sure that we have, you know, a steady supply of, of classic uh, Chardonnay as well as maybe this in 2021 um and then also uh build on build on the chardonnay the still chardonnay which we had such success with last summer sold out like that um and um also you know we've always made a still rosé uh from day one and then this year also we're um making some still red might be ready for christmas so that's really quite exciting um you know so i i feel that um there is scope for being both in the still and the sparkling camp. Um, you know, still wine is, it's, you know, price points are more achievable for people and uh, fun for us to make, um, as well as, you know, having that top tier sparkling range, which we have. Um, we also make a mid tier sparkling range uh, called the estate, which uh, is, has a better price point. And uh, I've got this really good, um, uh, word from um, you know the, um, the someone visited and uh, we, it's, it's about democratizing and she was a food maker she made some kind of uh, broth and she wanted to demo democratize a broth to make sure it wasn't just something stocked in incredibly expensive shops but also something you could pick up in the supermarket and uh, so yeah the, the, our mid tier kind of range of sparkling wine is to try and democratize uh, English wine which can be quite high in price points. Um, so that's kind of on our wine from the, um, the cellar. Um, every year we improve and we do things differently and uh, we buy more barrels and more tanks and we, you know, in, keep investing. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, and, you know, last summer, you know, on the kind of, the fun bit is to talk to people about the wine, you know, like this. It's just incredible because we want to talk about the wine. We love it. We live it. We it's hard work. And um, so we, we have a huge amount of people, uh, particularly last summer, we had so many people visit the vineyard. So that kind of inspired us to kind of get our facilities sorted out so you can visit. And at the moment, we're building a shepherd hut, which will be our bar outside. Uh, you've been here, you know, so we're just kind yeah. of building on that side. And uh, that's exciting, actually. So that's a kind of big plan for 2021 is to be have better facilities when people visit us. Um, so yeah, it's, um, always something to do in a vineyard, um, you know, and investing in, in equipment in the vineyard is also really important. Um, you know, this is becoming quite technical, but you know, if you have an organic vineyard and it, it's in a climate like the UK where it rains all the time, um, you have to be kind of really on top of canopy management. So, uh, I got my wish for Christmas and we got a new, a leaf plucker which is quite a technical thing to talk about. But for me, it's really important yeah. and uh, to get all those leaves away from where the, where the fruit is. Sorry. No, 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 you can fine. edit that. No, no, I mean, it, it's very important to, say, to get as much exposure from the sun because we're in a cool climate. And also imagine the, it's important to get the aeration to pre help prevent uh, any um, mildew or moss building up on the grapes because it's all about the quality. So no, it's, it's um, great to hear how much effort you're putting into it. And, particularly that you're that excited. I mean, it's it's not an easy job uh, maintaining a vineyard and making wine and you have to be enthusiastic and it's, I'm pleased you are. <laughs> <laughs> Good. It's the only way, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Aeration is key in the canopy, basically. You know, people have written books about canopy management and uh, yeah, it's super important. And uh, all these tiny little steps, which we do out there is what, you know, ends up being that style of wine and that particular approach. And I find that fascinating. You know, I came from an industry where, you know, it's, um, there, weren't, there, were, there wasn't many rule books. And so I went into wine. I was hoping it would be more technical, more scientific. And of, of course it is. But the choices we make as winemakers and wine producers are significant. Um, but you never quite know which one is the key. And they're probably all working together to make, the, the, you know, that particular style of wine. And a site. 
Uh, well, absolutely. It, it, wine is very much a coming together of so many elements. Some you can control and have impact on, some you can't. Particularly being in organic vineyards, you are a little bit more at helm to nature. But then you get to make amazing wines and, they, and there gets to be so much texture and development and everything we've been talking about. And all of this mm. is, you know, the, the, the fruit of the bloom or, you know, of your of everything that you have put in. And it's very evident. So, Kristen, thank you so much. Three wonderful wines. Um, I can't wait to hear more about from you in the future and everything that's happening. And, uh, and also these other wines, your still wines as well at some point. Definitely. Let's do another one, maybe in the autumn when we got the red. That'd be great. It would. It would. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you.